So right, make the chat bigger. All right, so yeah, welcome to this session, um, wherever you are. If you're in America, good morning. In Europe, it's afternoon. And um, yeah, it's a rare work day on a Sunday for me. I've just been teaching uh, a school in, in Turkey, which is exciting. Homeopathy is coming to life there. And, you know, yeah, so, you know, basically, Radar Opus, I want to talk about making it fun and easy because it, it can be. Um, and I guess I suppose I was thinking about this talk and what to say and what to do. Um, and, you know, it's almost 10 years now. I think next year will be 10 years since I started using the software. Um, I started studying properly in 2014, but, you know, I've, I've been around homeopathy my whole life. Um, grew up with the school of homeopathy, my father practicing, et cetera, et cetera. And he was a, he was a Mac repertory guy. So we all had, you know, we had Mac. Um, he was an early adopter. He had one of the first Macintosh computers. And I sort of didn't really like, you know, I wasn't into computers until I got to music college and I was like, oh, you can write music on computers. And so my first uh, foray into computers was music software. And that's, you know, if you've ever used Logic, you know, on a Mac, um, that was like the first software I got to grips with. And it's it's quite complicated. So it's like if you're really motivated by what the software can do for you, I don't think, you know, the complexity matters. It shouldn't it shouldn't get in the way. And like I, I accept that we're all from different generations and different kind of relationships to computers. And that's always going to be a factor. Um, but that said, you know, the trying to be creative in your process with the software, um, I think helps a great deal in the in the having fun with it. And I think unless you have fun with it, it's hard to really like plumb the depths and you know learn all that it can offer you um in your in your practice so you know i was the first year student using complete dynamics at the time because um you know i spoke to my dad and and he wasn't like oh i'll sort you out with um mac repertory he was like no you know have a look what's out there um and you know complete dynamics is the cheapest and you know have a go on that first so you know i was getting to grips with that and then Phil, who was working for Radar in the UK, came along to the school and, you know, demonstrated it. And Jeff Johnson, one of my favorite teachers um, at the school, was using Radar. So um, Phil asked me to do like a comparison of the two. And when I started using Radar, um, Radar Opus, I could tell it was like a, you know, a more, I guess, a mature software with lots of interesting functionality. So it drew me in. And the main thing that I liked about it was that you've got this great navigation tool and that when you're a student is super important because otherwise you get so used to using the search tool that you don't learn where the rubrics are uh, unless you're someone who you know learns you know Kent's repertory um you know the book and you know leaf through the chapters and leaf through you know sort of look at all the rubrics and sub rubrics and uh, you know i'm really quite passionate about that that um you shouldn't rely on the search tool too much in your you know in the early stages um okay so let's have a look so one of the ways you move through the program is through this navigation window which you can open in any repertory and in any materia medica and um Basically, what's nice about it is that you don't have to open anything. You can just start typing. So if I want to open mind, I just um, got to make sure I'm in that window. Just press M and it locks down to mind, mouth, male, genitalia, and male and female. Okay, so then enter again, goes down into the mind chapter. Oh, I'm not showing the screen. Oh, someone should have told me that earlier. Sorry. Thanks for that. There's the screen. Okay, good, thank you. <laughs> brain, Sunday brain. Uh, nice. Yeah, so, you know, my M, then enter, and you're straight into the mind chapter. 
And then you can obviously scroll or you can type for whatever it is you're looking for. And one good exercise you can do is just to pick a letter like N and then just see everything there is in, you know, in N. And if you hover the mouse, you get a preview of the remedies, you know, showing the authors as well. And you can even like click on a remedy straight from there and then still have the navigation window open, which is quite cool. So narcissism, one of Farouk's um, rubrics that he added, you can tell here by MTF zero. So if you're, you know, a geek like me, you will learn what all the author reference codes are and what they mean. And if you hover the mouse over them, you'll see where they come from. And if you click on it, then you'll get some other, you know, information about Farouk and about any of the authors we have there. And even here, there's a facility to add a link to a website. So um, for certain rubrics, we've added links that will open like a, you know, they're just straight to a web link, give you an overview in case you want to check something. And if you have, I think it's the Diamond Engine, you get the full suite of editing tools. So say you want to add a remedy here, you can do that. Or you want to add a, a, a link, you can do that. Or you want to cross-reference this to another symptom like the ones that are there. You can, you know, add a cross-reference. You can add a symptom as well. You could say narcissism, you know, relationship within or, or whatever. You know, so one of the nice things about Radar Opus is like that customizability, um, making the program, being creative, having fun with it. Um, you know, so I would say, especially when you first start using it, uh, allocate some time each day. Uh, that's just play time with the software, you know, not working on a case, um, just, just exploring it and learning where everything is in the repertory so that you know, the other downside to searching, like if I were to search for, um, I don't know, thoughts, rush of thoughts, for example, is you can see the cross references here, but it's not so easy to like incorporate them in your analysis. But if you go to the um, actual rubric, and in case you didn't know, spacebar um, cycles through the different view options of the repertory so if i hit space i'll um you know i can remove the remedies from view and see the cross references more easily and then if i hold down control and click on any of these symptoms and you know by the way i'm using a pc so i say control if you're using a mac substitute control with command um okay so they've all got ticks. And now if I drag and drop that, the software immediately creates a group assigned the letter A, and they all count now as one rubric. You see here, that's the numerical order of the remedies, and that's the number of symptoms, and that's the grade. So even though I pulled in four, um, I've created one rubric with 319 remedies, effectively. So another benefit of... Um, going into the repertory itself is to see the um, cross-references easily at a glance. Okay, spacebar, like I said, will bring the remedies up. Press it again, I'll see the authors now. Press it again, I will um, not see anything. Okay. So, you know, guys, I like to be interrupted. I like a Q&A style. Um, all the way through. So, you know, if you have questions, just, just put them in the chat. Um, Nakash was just checking that everyone can see the screen share. It says I'm sharing, so should be should be fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah, everyone can see it. Yeah, yeah, if you can't follow it, um, I guess it's being recorded and, you know, shortcuts for basically one of the first things you should do when you're getting into the software and you want to learn the shortcuts is click on help and then click on shortcuts list. And you will then get this PDF load in your browser. Oops. 
see here, Windows and Mac, all the shortcuts you need to know are right here. So on a Mac, whenever, you know, basically for a Mac, command is equivalent to control on Windows. So if you want to copy paste on a Mac, you do command C, command V, and on Windows, control C, control V. Yeah, so regarding that thing that I just showed with the cross references, um, you hold down control or command, depending on PC or Mac, click, 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 and drag. And you just make sure they're all ticked and that will take the cross references. And it gives you, you know, it makes it, it's important to combine similar rubrics because otherwise you might choose the rubric which doesn't contain what turns out to be the curative remedy. And then you'd be really annoyed. So I think it's a very key um, technique we have to get used to using in our repertories and especially in the mind chapter. Okay, the other thing, you know, what allowed me to learn Radar Opus really well was going to YouTube. <clears throat> and at the time there was lots of videos by Rene Otter um, who's our, our Dutch um, guy. He's um, been working with Radar since, you know, donkey's years, as we say in England. And um, also Will Taylor from the USA. I, I really liked his videos. So, you know, nowadays when you load the software, there's a welcome page, right? Help, welcome page. So that loads when you first sign up to Radar Opus and um, you know basically you can check out any of the videos here so say you want to learn how to search click there and you'll go to our academy and that has a bunch of you know search orientated videos yeah that open in YouTube and if you like my videos you can just uh, you know one of these will open my YouTube and you can I've got playlists in my YouTube. So, you know, spend some time watching the videos and immersing yourself, you know, in the time that you allocate to play with the software. Make make that part of it, you know, watching the videos. You know, have a look at all these menus as well. Like actually spend some time reading them rather than, you know, always being in a hurry because you're working on a case. You know, just click on everything. Spend that time. Here's the manual. It's a nice online version that you can check out, you know, works nicely. You zoom in. You can search it. Yeah, so have a look at that. There's an advised settings manual. You can get a support session here. You can check for the updates or new content check your license information you can open provings.com you can sign up to the newsletter you can join our facebook group here etc so any of these like all of the functions you need are actually available from this you know top menu bar and i know most people will use the icons and you know in the normal settings you would have the name of the icon underneath and what it does um but yeah, everything can be accessed from here. And another important tip I would give you is, um, you know, right click is, you know, used throughout the program. In many areas, if you right click on something, you see what we call a context menu open up. So the menu is contextual to, to where you are in the program. And you can see all of the things you can do from that menu. So you can take the rubric um, you can drag it and drop it, which is what most people do. Or you can uh, use this button here. And if you click the little drop down next to it, you see the take menu. And that shows you the different ways you can uh, you can take rubrics. So one thing that you can do is take and specify the options. And this shows you like all of the different ways you can take a symptom. So let's say I want to make it eliminative, as in, you know, the, the remedy has to be in that rubric 
um, to come through in the analysis. You could say, I don't want to see first degree. I don't want to see plain type. You know, I only want to see italic and bold and underlined. And I want it to come into clipboard three. Yeah. And I want to take the cross references combined in one rubric. Take. And that's what it does. Yeah. So now if I put in a second symptom like um, abdomen, distension, eating after ag, put that in there too. You know, and then it's it's like limited to the clinically confirmed remedies that have this overactive mind as well as that symptom there. Okay, just gonna have a little look. Realistic assessment of the time required to learn radar opus and use it comfortably. Comfortably. So Jay Kelly, what well, how would you define comfortably to like to like um not feel like you have any roadblocks, I guess, when you're using it? I would say, and it depends on whether you're fast tracking it and you know, really um doing it intensively, you're learning. Let's say you spend half an hour a day giving yourself specific learning the software time and not related to any case taking or anything. I don't know, uh, to use it comfortably, like a couple of months. And then, you know, you'll find the longer you use it, the more, obviously, the more like you'll learn it and become eventually a master. <laughs> okay. Henriette, what is the um, asterisk that stands behind Ruby ACA? Yeah, good, good question. Is that here? No. Um, basically, it's a kind of, um, you know, a new thing that we did in Synthesis Adonis was to add not only remedies, but families to rubrics so that people who haven't had a full training in families and kingdoms would be able to get some indications uh, from their analysis, so from the symptoms of the case, they'd be able to check which families were also indicated. So the Ruby ACA family contains Coffea and China and and some others too. So if I right click on it and choose limit to members of this family, so remember, right click, right click, brings up the menu, spend a bit of time seeing what it does. And, you know, eventually actions become like second nature. So I just go right to the bottom, limit to members of the family. Kingdoms and Families version two is the like latest one, has contains the most. The Cronquist plants is the most updated, I'd say. And then you could select Ruby ACA. And it's like, well, yeah, you can see from that that the family is indicated as well as the remedies. So you've got China, Coffea, China Solf, and also. This is fresh coffee and that's roasted coffee, coffee tosta. And you can do that on a remedy too. So let's say I right click on Lachesis, limit to the family members. You can see this is all the list of the different families. If I'm looking at the taxonomy, so where it is in the natural kingdom, I go down to the bottom and here, it's in Latin, um, but serpentis, that's, um, Things so, or um, Sauropsida would be all the reptiles, and only Lachesis is there in that particular. Movement. But, so you can limit your analysis to any family with a right click on a remedy or a family. Yeah. So if you browse synthesis Adonis, you can um, you can change it to a family repertory actually. So in synthesis of zone, it's one of the key features of it is that it has views and you can change the view um, according to what you want it to do. So if I change it to only families, a lot of symptoms will disappear now. So that's down to some choices I've made up here. Um, you can have hidden symptoms like be shown uh, or not. <laughs> And the same with remedies. So like if I change it to a family repertory, all of the other remedies that were excluded, I can see from here. Yeah. 
And if we go to the mind section, that's where most of the family's information is. So with one like operation, I've changed synthesis adonis into probably one of the most expansive sources of family information. Yeah. Which is really cool. And um, if I click on the repertory icon, that opens and I can then drag Let's say I want to look at the psychotic miasm as a family in synthesis. I can drag it onto synthesis there and it extracts all the rubrics of the psychotic miasm for me. And it's got grading as well, which is nice. So if you want, if you're keen to learn about families and you didn't learn it on your course, you can do some of that in synthesis. But if you, you know, if you think that's all um, not something you care to learn, you, you can use the views to lock it down to classical sources only. And then, you know, you'll see here the families and the, mo the modern editions are taken away. And you can do that while you're browsing the repertory, or you can do that whilst you're looking at an analysis as well. So if I were to um, recall an analysis, let's uh, let's see. I've got patients' names hidden, which is cool. Um, let's see what this one is. Okay, that's good. All right. So just going over some of your questions here. Um, okay, so Irinya, I think you were, I've, I think I've deleted that um, thing that I did now, but it just means that 67 out of 234 were included because I um, asked the program not to include um, plain type remedies on that rubric so it was just taking the italic bold and underline and Katrin for your question strike through indicates that there was a correction made um to that remedy so it was added erroneously and rather than removing it entirely we put a strike through to show that it was corrected because um uh, it's just more transparent I suppose so we've got here a um repertorization where we've got a group of symptoms. The asterisk here, by the way, shows that I made a search for clairvoyance um, within the repertory and then combined everything I could find. So like dreams clairvoyant would be in there as well. And um, I'll show you that technique now. Um, it's another technique I use a lot. So when you're searching, the search tool is like the hub of the program. And I know I kind of, said at the start one of the best things about the program is the navigation tool because then you learn the repertory properly but equally once you've done that using the search tool can be very powerful as well so let's say i search by default it will search in the current document only which makes the search very fast you just need to make sure you've got you know synthesis or whatever you want to search in like that was the last thing you touched. Go to the search or just type it in the top there. Clairvoyance. And, you know, you can see from the list that, you know, it's looking at the right word. So at that point, I can just put an asterisk and I don't have to type the whole thing. We use asterisks a lot, don't we? And then you see like clairvoyance come through in synthesis donus. Then if I right click, I can see the list and it tells me the shortcuts. So I know that. Control enter will take all rubrics and create a new combined rubric and add it to the first available clipboard, which will be clipboard number two. And then I've made myself a clairvoyance rubric, which will have a little bit more in it. And at the moment, I'm limited to classical sources. So if I put that on full, you'll see it changes and becomes a much larger rubric. And now suddenly I can see fungi, lanthanides, see animals, birds coming through, yeah? 
but I can quite easily change that and not see any of that and see a much more classical, traditional, cautious um, analysis. And for me, like, you know, it, every patient's so different and requires different kinds of remedies that, um, you know, I like to, I appreciate that Radar Opus uh, gives you all the, you know, all the options, all the tools, but you can take that uh, technique further. <clears throat> so you don't have to just search in the current document only. You can search in all your repertories. And this is very powerful if you have the full access code, which um, some of you will have, or if you've, you know, bought a very, you know, big package. So like here, all of the repertories that have clairvoyance in have come up. And if you view all documents in one list with this command here, you can then combine clairvoyance from every single repertory that you have. No other software will do that. And I do use the other one side, so I do know. So now just control enter and it will combine clairvoyance from all the repertories. So that suddenly becomes a way bigger symptom. And it might be from like the Groots, yeah, the Groots repertory of clairvoyant dreams has a lot more in it. Um, Hadley's Lax might have some more. Um, Suggesta, Tominello's Crystals. Yeah, so, and the grading will change as well. You see some higher grades, LSD, you know. So if you want to really expand your options in radar, you can. And if you want to really narrow them down, you can by choosing a traditional um, style view. Like Vanith Siddharthan, um, who's a, you know, a very successful homeopath based in Kerala. Um, he worked with us to create a view with classical sources. And likewise, Eric Van Brunsel, who wrote um, our amazing keynotes that so many people have relied upon for decades. Um, he's created a view for us as well. So those, those are the, you know, if you follow those teachers, you can work according to their methodologies very easily. But you can also work with kingdoms. You know, I've showed you families. This is how it looks with just families. See how easy it is to change with one click. You could say, um, okay, I want to just see the animal remedies now. Easily done. Just minerals, just plants, just clinical confirmation, only provings. And, you know, that's only the views. You can change the analysis strategy as well. So you could change to see small remedies only. You could see um, the master score through master's new algorithm, which again, you'll see um, highlights the traditional remedies more. Okay, so you can just see how, you know, you do need to set aside playtime <laughs> with Rainer Opus to really um, plumb the depths. Okay, Orion Hasid, can I ungroup the group I made? Yeah, you can. So there's two ways of grouping symptoms. <clears throat> one is called combining and one is called grouping. All right, so let's walk through that now. Okay, I'm gonna open synthesis again. I'm gonna press space a couple of times and see what cross-references are there. All right, so the first way I showed you was to press control and click on the cross-references or command for a Mac. So let's say absent-minded, okay. Difficult concentrations, they're absorbed in their fancies. They might be staring thoughtless or wondering thoughts. Let's go for that and then drag it in. And that will do the grouping where it assigns a letter, okay? And that means that you keep all of those rubrics intact but it looks a little bit messy. So what you can do is control A, right click and ungroup. And then, well, actually it's not the fastest way, but you know, control A or command A, select all. Control enter, which was the same command from the search window when you want to combine or just right click, you know, if you can't remember. Also on a Mac, if you don't use a mouse, 
you don't have a right click um it's you can set up on your trackpad to do like a two finger gesture and that will do a right click or it's control click and um, to get to get the menu up or just you know or use a mouse on your mac because it will save your wrist get a nice vertical ergonomic mouse and uh you know business expense and all that um so yeah right click and group or combine which is control enter. All right, so you can see from this window that one option is to group where you assign a letter, which is what the software did automatically, or you can combine, which is where you normally delete the existing rubrics. So there's no way to undo that, unfortunately, at the moment. It'd be nice if it just made a little drop down thing that showed you what was in there and you could show or hide it with a toggle, but it doesn't do that. But you can, if you untick delete the original rubrics and give it a name. So if I'm doing this, I will try and name it with everything I've included like this. Concentration difficult and I might just abbreviate it like that. Fancies and wondering thoughts and then combine. So then what you've got is the original rubrics are left there but given a naught to mean that they don't count for anything. And I would then just pull that into its own clipboard. So then you've got your, that is your combined rubric that you made, your bespoke one. And down here, you can, you can keep a trace of what you did if you feel like it. But personally, I don't do that. I just delete them and accept that there's no undo with that particular operation. So Orion, I hope that answers your question. Cool. Yeah, so Irinya, if you want to search for clairvoyance uh, and find all repertories, the, the thing you need to do is first type the word with an asterisk if you if you feel like it. And the default setting for radar opus is to search in the current document only. And you have to have that one selected for it to work. There we go. Synthesis is Danish. So what you need to do to change it is to click on the A to Z symbol and then tell it where you want it to look. And in this case, all repertories. And then if you want to combine them all, you can view all documents in one list and then press control enter or right click and choose from them from the menu. No worries. The other cool thing you can do from this window is uh, extract a graph, uh, which is Kind of cool. Oh, uh, I crashed it. Classic. Never mind. Always happens when you're demonstrating. Werner, did you get a crash this morning? <laughs> oh. Oh, that's right as well. Uh -huh. Once for Werner. Let's see. I'll try not to do it again. <laughs> For the graphical view, I think you need the gold engine off the top of my head. For the graphic analysis, I think it might might be because I had all um, repertories in one list. Let's try again. Clairvoyance in all repertories, and I won't tick the view all documents in one list and see. Oh, did it again. I'll definitely be submitting that bug then. Reversal, thank you for that. All right, I'm not going to try that again now. I found a weakness. No point hammering it out. Yes, Sandy, it is uh, how to submit bugs. Yeah, um, submitting bugs. We have this um, software online called ClickUp now, which is cool. But for you to submit a bug, you go to help send email to the scientific team. Would that be the best way? Yeah, do that. And then we'll make sure it gets through to the programmers and we can add something in ClickUp. Um, so yeah, that's just an inevitable part of it. Bug squashing. Um, all right, so Sandy, your question, um, to look in all repertories as a default, 
Okay, this is another important thing about Radar Opus that we brought up. Every part of the program you see has this little configuration icon, like cogwheels. So in the in the table of contents, which we call top, there's one there. In the search, there's one there. And it's always in the top right-hand corner, pretty much. Um, and in the repertory, there's one over here. So these are like your local configuration options local because they're specific to each like tab or each you know part of the program you're in so if you want to change something to do with the search defaults open the search click on the configuration icon and then see here i've chosen this option keep the last place i've chosen for the next searches the default will be this and you could change that to all repertories if you wanted to but um, I use this one because I'm constantly changing um, and I might want to, you know, um, you know, spend some time searching in references and I want it to remember what I did last time. So that's my choice. But yeah, for you, just change it here. Select that. Um, here you can choose things like to use synonyms by default. So when you type a word, it would automatically look for the synonyms of that word. Um, yeah, and you can, you know, you do need to spend a bit of time um, having a look here. And if you have a question, probably best place is to come on the Facebook group and ask, because me and, me and Werner um, are quite good at, you know, <laughs> getting to those. Um, so you see, sometimes if it's quite a complex part of the program, you'll have tabs within the configuration pane. So... This is to do with how it displays the search results. You can sort of nuance it a bit, change the spacing, see whether you want to show tags or not. Uh, the remedy results, you know, so this is when you're looking at lists of remedies within the search. You know, do you want to see the authors there or not? Um, so in general, these two, you won't have to change too much. And maybe this one, like you can, for example, turn on, take symptoms with a click. So um, if I were to have that on and type uh, for morning, waking, uh, uh, if I were to now just click on that rubric, it gets added to my clipboard automatically. But, you know, with that on, you have to be a bit careful about where you're clicking. But it's it's a nice time saving. Okay, so um, right. Let's see if there's another question. All right, from Anna. Hi, Anna. Um, if I read a book in Radar, like Bailey's and what it's psychology, can I highlight some texts so it'll be easier to find later? Yeah, it's yeah, kind of. So we have bookmarks. This icon here is my list of bookmarks. And uh, when you when you like save a bookmark, if you save it with a number in front and then choose sort A to Z, then you can kind of order them according to what you what are quite important. And then they become like shortcuts to, you know, so if I want to go to the Adonis ailments section, I just double click on my bookmark and I'm there. Or Murphy bipolar disorder, boom, it opens. Or Yazga's dictionary, double click. There it is. Uh, or Matthew Wood, a new repertory we have. So if you spend time making bookmarks, you can absolutely like whiz through the program. Open Suggester, boom, done. So <clears throat> that's a cool thing. And if I were to open Bailey, so click on the references icon, type his name, open the book, use the navigation tool, um, so press M, Materia Medica, go to Graphites. So let's say, um, you know, I wanted to bookmark this section. So it's not highlighting um, a particular part of it. You can't do that as such, but you can right click and add a bookmark and give it a name, Bailey. Graphites, work, save, 
and then you know if i click within the table of contents and the bookmarks and type bailey where is it hmm. bailey for fighty squay there it is blatter alistair gray's proving ah i bookmarked his rubrics this is from Farouk Masters Bufo. Yeah, so you can keep a keep a kind of check of what you've been working on using the bookmarks. The other thing you can do these days is to um, create your own material medica. So um, I'm kind of going all over the place now, but let me show you how you do that. Um, so I've already created some and you and you know this is in the new create and analyze bundle that you get in 3.3 .3. you you have to buy it but it's like 130 euros but, and it allows you to create your own repertory in Materia, Med Materia Medica so you click file and then create a new reference or new repertory given a name it automatically assigns an author abbreviation for you and sets it to add to a favorite um, and I'll just open one that I already have made. Um, yeah, so this is what I've done so far, you know, taken some symptoms of rattus rattus. Um, and, you know, like the other books, you can um, browse through it. So here's an entry from Mucor. So what you can do is when you've made your own material medica, um, switch to edit mode. And de you know the default is it goes to the introduction, but you can add a remedy here. So let's say I wanted to add something on graphitis. Type the name, and if you know the abbreviation, just just do it because then it will lock down to that remedy. Click OK. So we're in graphitis now. If I go back to my bookmarks, Bailey graphitis, double click grab some text to control, uh, control C to copy. I can then put that into my Materia Medica. Okay. There is a quite a strict limit on what you can copy paste at the moment, but we need to change that. And you can add a chapter as well. So say like Bailey quotes and then save. And then that will immediately be available here under graphites. So you could like, you know, you could compile your own material medica from your favorite sections in the program. You could also open graphites as, you know, the keynotes. And then click on Google and then just add the word like homeopathy case and see if you find anything from the internet that you want to add into your material medica to copy paste. Um, yeah. So, you know, that's, that's nice. If, you know, if we're talking about making radar is fun, um, creative, I think the ability to add your own notes to remedies in that way uh, is nice and you can search for it instantly. So if I search for the word um, crash, which is the word you use then, and search in all, so I click on the A to Z and choose all references. My book comes up with that quote from Bailey straight away. So as soon as you've added some text to your Materia Medica and saved it, the program re-indexes and you can search for it straight away and include it, you know, you can include Materia Medica um, as a rubric in the software. Yeah, so that's something else we could look at. Okay, so is that Elaine or Eliana? Um, I don't know. Um, I couldn't find anything about fleas, allergy, allergy to fleas. Okay, so if you can't find anything, um, the best thing to use is the search and um, 
you could try searching the repertories first. So allergy, you can definitely find something. Okay, and do you need to be so specific as fleas? It might be that you find insects, right? Okay, nothing to insects there. So what do insects do? What do fleas do? They bite. Okay, so let's get rid of allergies and just look at bites. Okay, we get biting. Um, if I put an asterisk there now, we won't get biting. We'll just get bites. Okay, and that's because when you type a full word, Radaropus uses a dictionary and it finds the different endings like biting um, automatically. But if you use an asterisk, it bypasses the dictionary. So here's everything around bites. So we've got sensitivities and mosquito bites. General's wounds, bites. I mean, that would be the main one. And um, you could combine that with general's allergic constitution, and then you'd, you know, you'd kind of cover it. So that's like a Boninghausen technique is to build up the full symptom by using larger building blocks. So general's um, allergic constitution. That in clip of one, and then any that cover both are your remedies. Okay, so I, I hope that helps. Okay, any specific requests, please uh, ask. Otherwise, I'm going to keep, um, you know, sort of circling around and um, going with the flow. So last thing we were doing was the search window and maybe i can help with that too so when you open the search like you can access it quite easily from the menu bar now um so when you're working within a patient file you can quite easily like search for something up here and um you can change the default setting to open the simple or the advanced search my preference is for the simple search um let's just see where it is search yeah. ah here it is the toolbar search opens the free search or the advanced search there. so i think the default is advanced and that means if you click here it opens the advanced search all right, so the advanced search really means that it kind of guides you in the different things you can do. So one thing you can do is search for words, like forsaken, press enter twice because you have to, you know, um, confirm that that's what, you know, the word you want in the first box. The reason you have to do that is it's just so that it gives you the option to add a second word. So forsaken dreams. Yeah and then you press enter twice again. All right, the, the eraser clears the search. You can also search for a remedy. So um, phosphorus, and the best thing you can do is type the remedy abbreviation. So as it's displayed in a repertory, all of us who use, you know, who work same as know that it's FOSS with a full stop, right? So just type FOSS with a full stop. And that's the only remedy you'll see there. If you type FOSS for us, not only are you kind of wasting your time and you then see all of these different phosphorus options and you have to click down here to get to phosphorus and press enter twice. And that will do essentially a extraction of all of the rubrics of phosphorus. Okay. So I can clear it here and Let's say I want to do Corsicum, put a full stop, enter twice, three times, and then it does the search. And it will search wherever you've selected up here. And the real powerful part of this is using it for repertories. And um, this little icon here, if you click, allows you to change the results to a degree. So you can say, remove plain type, just show the more confirmed symptoms. You can also select the size of the rubric with this 
option. So tick here, rubrics less than or equal to 12 remedies. Okay, so then you're going to see the strange, rare and peculiar symptoms of Corsicum that are also clinically confirmed. And then you can do, um, let's just see where I am, how many are there? Synthesis. So then you can add a word as well. So you say, I just want to see generals. Enter. Just, pre just keep pressing enter as many times as you need for the search to go. All right, so let's say I want to pull this into a clipboard now. Control A or Command A, drag, goes into a clipboard, click. Then it gets jumbled up in that process. So right click and sort. Okay, so now double click the tab header, gets rid of the table of contents. Okay, and now I can do Control A. Right click, copy symptom text only is what I do here. That gives me just a list of the symptoms rather than showing me the remedies. And then go ahead, open Word, blank document, course to come, confirmed characteristic symptoms in generals. Base. Yeah. So if you're doing homework, research, etc., it's it's a very powerful tool for extracting the symptoms of any remedy. I used it a lot when I was writing my book on animal remedies. And um, especially when there's no materia medica like uh, available, and which is the case for a lot of new remedies. Um, I do another search for, um, I don't know. Let's see, punchy alignum. Search in all repertories. So you might find if I then click here, now there's not going to be confirmed symptoms really. So if I do rubrics containing less than or equal to 12 again, that's my magic number. Then I get 44 symptoms in synthesis and it's going to give me a fair indication of, you know, what are the more characteristic sy symptoms there? And I could do the same thing, you know, control A, pull to the clipboard, click on the clipboard, right click, sort. I mean, that sh really should be automated by the program. And then we've got our contralinum. And what's nice about this is, of course, is you can see the related remedies like outflow, which is you no know, surprise. Some minerals here. So minerals as a group, salts as a group. Like salts meaning, you know, a combination of two mineral, calcareous, earth element. Paroxysmal laughing. <laughs> Eagle syndrome, never heard of that. What's that? There's a symptom note, excellent. It's characterized by morphological abnormality, ossification of the styloid process. Cool. And that's thanks to Farouk and one of his clinical rubrics. Good job. So you can see how, um, I don't know, how you, you could just spend all day <laughs> on this software. It's so, you know, it's, it's fun and easy, right? Okay, uh, Kristen, how much is the upgrade to Adonis? I have 332 from price in dollars. Okay, I guess we'll be about the same here. Okay. Uh, right, if you want to know what the price is, click on the shop icon in your program. All right, it opens the shop, gives you the create and analyze bundle, which is our latest release. That lets you make a repertory and a materia medica and a bunch of other stuff. And then basically have a scroll down. I'm sure Adonis won't be far away, but if you can't find it, type Adonis. Right, now you're looking for the upgrade because you have treasure edition. There you go. The VAT gets added at the end. So it's 8280 plus VAT, which is an absolute bargain. much cheaper than the yearly complete repertory upgrades.
I would say, unless of course you use complete dynamics, but then you're paying all the time anyway because you because you rent it. Unless you buy it on the app and then you own it, so that's a good thing to do if you're using that software. Okay, so yeah, just just click on the store icon and you can go ahead and and buy it. And um, yeah, you're using three three two, so it'll be in there ready to use. So once you've bought it. Um, you'll it'll get processed and you'll just get an email from Zeussoft saying restart your software, make sure you're connected to the internet, and it should just be then available within your repertory um, top table of contents. But yeah, it's a, it's a huge step forward, uh, really worth getting. Vivian, tracking your journey. Yeah, there's um, a history button here. There you go. So a history icon, which is next to the back and forwards buttons. So backwards and backwards would take you, sort of trace you back through. So if I go ahead and go back, go into a generals, wounds, back to graphites, back to checking the materia medica, or just click on the history. You can see it's tracing its way back through. So that's how you do that. The shop is a trolley, shopping trolley here, next to the gifts icon. Gifts shows you um, like news by default. When we sometimes we publish a startup PDF to like when we have an offer, but you can open free notes as well. And free notes is something that you get from the content updater, which um, used to open periodically and when you know nowadays because we've just released 332 most of this will already be in there but the pdfs are like just free things you can add so like mammal themes click on it download that's done now and if i go back up here to the gift icon open free notes it's in there and i double click and i've got mammal themes there Okay. okay, Anna, Rajan's books aren't in Radar anymore. They were, but um, because Rajan owns Synergy now, he didn't want to make them available in Radar anymore, which is just fair enough, commercially um, driven decision. Uh, it's a shame um, because, you know, that that collaboration was there in the past and it's not anymore but um that's the way the cookie crumbles okay so dr luke you have a question i see you've suggested of similar symptoms under the remedies of research i don't have that and that's in vain so i might make suggestions of similar symptoms under the remedies of your search mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see what you mean. Do you mean that the cross references are showing in the search results? Or do you mean when I'm in the repertory, um, there's cross references under, that's what you mean, isn't it? So that should be a, a yeah, that should be a default setting. Um, and sometimes it gets turned off. So sometimes you might click this little icon, which is tags, and then they'll go away. If you click it again, you'll see they come back. Okay, so that's the first thing to try. And if that doesn't work, you look in the local configuration of the repertory, which is that cog wheel. You've got to make sure expand the cross references is on. It's got a tick. As long as you've got the tags highlighted like that and you haven't changed the preferences, the cross references should be showing. Okay. But yes, sometimes we click things and then we forget that we've clicked things and then thinking, why is that not that? <laughs> yeah, the suggestions are cross references. The other thing that we have are like referring rubrics, which are basically synonyms that um, often like I will, because I work on synthesis, I'm one of the 
people who contribute um and, and i'm a teacher so i know what it's like for students when they're first like getting used to the repertory so it's like when you're first year you, you wouldn't you know if someone feels guilty you wouldn't go to anxiety of conscience do you know what i mean you wouldn't go to reproaching oneself so if you type guilty or guilt like it's there without remedies but it says go to reproaching oneself right so if you don't see that and you just see an empty thing there then you've clicked on tags icon to remove your tags so you just need to try clicking there first okay and then when you go to reproaching oneself it displays all of the synonyms behind the rubric so it gives you a like flavor a deeper flavor of what that means and then if you see these links then we've got um, a link to merriam webster on guilty and that would open yeah so yeah part of the aim with synthesis is to you know keep adding um, modern terminology so that you can find you know when you're a beginner you can find things and you know another classic one would be to like open bladder and look for cystitis right and then it says see inflammation and then you're kind of you know you're trained to remember that all itises are inflammation so if you're looking for prostatitis you open prostate and go to inflammation next time hopefully but even if you forget that you can type the word and you'll be taken to the correct symptom i was just trying to remember because i've been working on this recently i just remember what i've been adding to the mind section like this section self um the different things to like what can i put in self-effacing maybe yeah self-effacing and that takes you to see want of self-confidence self-deprecation yeah so not only does it help um you know for someone who's searched a more modern term it also helps add context to the to the main view itself oh yeah cool all right so um jessica good glad that's sorted vivian my tags icon tells me to select which tabs to show hi yeah so i think that means you're that means you're clicking on the little arrow yeah but if you click on the icon itself it just toggles the um tags on and off yay and it's not just um you know tags is not just the cross references it's everything like these Ortega miasms, these concepts, symptom notes, you can like quickly hide all of that if you're finding it distracting. But generally I just leave that on and just, you know, just remember not to click the tags icon. Nancy, um, you're a beginner, cool. How do I get back to Adonis main screen? All right, so if you wanna get back to it, one way is to look at the tabs you have open and, you know, sort of, oh, there's synthesis, click. But if it's a different repertory, you can open them all from the little drop down arrow. That drop down arrow is a kind of consistent feature of a program where wherever you see it, it will usually open a menu. OK, the way I would do it is to click repertories to open them and then make Synthesis of Donuts a favorite so that it's at the top. So to make a favorite, you have to um, have 3.3, which is part of the free upgrade. And then you right click on the repertory and then make it a favorite. And you'll see, because it's already a favorite, it's saying remove from this. And then it will jump up to the top. Okay. The other way you could do it is to make a bookmark. And um, yeah. But yeah, just click on repertories and then double click on Adonis and it will open. Okay. Um, Irinya wants to see Anna Reverka's, um, yeah, yeah, I use Anna's tool. Um, it's it's gonna be really, really helpful. So the way to open it is to click on the search menu and then click Family Finder and then Alt F2 is the shortcut. So remember that the F keys on your keyboard um, do functions for the computer by default, like volume and screen brightness and stuff. So 
there's um if you using windows press the windows home key and type keyboard um open the control panel for the keyboard no that's not it okay i'm i'm function keys f key i can't remember how i did it now someone else might be able to help me yeah Irina is on a Mac. So on a Mac, you um, press Command Space to open the Spotlight, and then type Keyboard. And in the System Preferences that opens, you can change that the function keys operate as F keys by default. And that's quite a good thing to do for radar openers. So in case you don't know, the function keys will do volume and brightness and stuff. And if you hold down the key that says FN, that will like bring it, you know, do the do the kind of alternative function, you know, which would be a function key, <laughs> if that makes sense. So in Radar Opus, you would have to do Fn and then F5 to open the advanced search, for example. But um, yeah, on any computer system, you can change what the function keys do. Um, yeah. Yeah, actually, I did it. Oh, it doesn't matter. There's there'll be a way to do it. You just have to research it. Go go on Google, uh, but on a Mac it's pretty pretty easy. Um, right. So Family Finder. We opened it. This is a way to access Anna's database from her from her clinical practice, and it contains families and remedies, mostly um, you know lesser known remedies. All right. So. Three things you can do, broadly speaking. You can type a word or group of words and see which remedies come up. So um, let's just see if I can. Oh, cancel. Yeah. All right. Um, doesn't matter. Um, but let's say the focus. So. It's not so much about symptoms, this. It's about the like way that the patient um, interacts with the homeopath. So like the way they give their anamnesis um, and then the kind of like theme or expressions that they use. So let's say the whole case revolves around um, themselves in some way, issues to do with the self. You could just type the word self. Press enter twice. And then you see all of the possible, you know, where the word self is found within her database. So you've got the thymus gland comes up, like a podium, and you can see it highlighted here, relating to self-confidence. And this zoom button makes it easier to read. And you see here experience. So this is the core experience of like a podium according to uprooted or unrooted, homesick and lonesome. Con theme, this is the theme, cowardice, lack of self-confidence, aversion, authority and hierarchies, vulnerable and furious. The context, bitter and sour, distant, this is how they present themselves. And the expression, very dependent, demanding, clean, etc. And they're kind of, um, so if something is found uh, underlined, then it's, it's like a rubric, um, it gets more important, uh, a higher grade. Uh, Irim, if you have a question, just, just pop it in the chat. Okay, self, and let's say trapped. And now you'll see the, you know, the results update. So because birds have a strong trapped sensation, um, they come up to the top. So none of them cover both at the moment. They're all like one out of two. So birds, it shows you by default the taxonomy, so where they are. They're um, vertebrates, uh, they amniotic and birds. You can see the family members here. And it, there's a map which gives you an idea of the um, overall sort of level of development of that person. And if you click here, you can open a PDF of her map. And this gives you like the, the full shebang, the whole overview of her ideas using the periodic table as a guide to the level of experience. So birds are like down here, I believe. Birds of prey are there, row six with the gold series, and also row five 
the being unique silver series. So it's it's a good it's a good kind of like broad perspective on you know what Sholton, Sankaran, Joshi's have done um with her own twist on it. Um so yeah. let's say I don't know if it's on my head but um uh, no I've gone blank well I've got blank try blank blank <laughs> Self, lanthanides, there you go. All about the self. That's quite useful memory jog, isn't it? Carnivorous plants, trap. Bufo rana, self-destructive. Um, the other thing to say is that yellow relates to um, plants and animals, and black relates to sarcodes and minerals and crystals. And so her, like, her whole map that i had open there explains it here you have two-dimensional and all the themes of and three-dimensional and all the themes of so she's saying if your patient has this demeanor they're more likely three-dimensional and if they have this demeanor they're more likely two-dimensional and the, the focus is more on like one issue one problem whereas here it's many 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 yeah uh, it's a, it's a it's a good thing, I, I like it, and um, yeah, certainly when I am in a pickle, I will uh, I'll use it. You like Epstein Barr virus, right? When would you? How else would you find it in a homeopathy software? And um, for sure, that's like if someone's got immune problems, like you'd want to look at that. So yeah. If you've got a case of immune problems, type, type immune. See what you get. Epstein Barr, Candida, Lanthanides. This is a tree, isn't it? Um, Douglas fir, Brucella, yeah. European. Yeah. Nice. I mean, what's not to like? Okay. Question. Family Finder is a separate purchase. So, um, Click on the shop, go down here, type Ooh, family. There it is, family finder, 151 euros. What's that? Bargain. Yeah, it's an add on. Okay, how do I clear the clipboard title? Says Vivian, I can only do it by changing. Okay. Right click, change clipboard name, name it. Press OK. Open it, check. It's all good. So, yeah, right click. Right click is your friend <laughs> in Radar Opus. If you take one thing away from today, it could be that, and you'll be in a good place. See, so look, right click. Oh, what can I do? Right click. What can I do? Okay, maybe not in the family finder. In the search, right click. Uh, open something. If you're in the simple search and you type uh, a remedy, if you right click on it, you get the options. If you type a word, uh, right click on it and you'll see the options. Look, there's synonyms. And look, these days, I, I don't think it's been released yet, but we're, we've made a tool where you can add your own synonyms and roots and branches, so you can edit the dictionary, which is which is really cool. So, you know, if you did that in, you know, adding, adding your own synonyms to the mind rubrics, you could then do one, you could do a search for one word, turn the synonyms on, have all of the things that you think are cross-reference to that and easily add it all as one thing, which that would be a fun project. Fun and creative and easy. <laughs> uh, the, how do I delete clear the clipboard title? Well, you would do change clipboard name, and what we do, just go back to clipboard one, maybe. 
what do you want it to go back to, Vivian? You want it to go back to, you want it to be blank. Okay. Uh, if you don't want to see the names, I mean, you can't have it blank. It will always have a name. If you don't want to see it though, you can click on the configuration. And then within that, you've got the option here for clipboards. And then just change that to minimum. And then you'll just have a line separating your clipboards. Would that be more up your street? Maybe that's what you're looking for, but there's no way to make it just blank, I think. Yeah. So no, you could, um, let's see, let's think about this. Um, let's go divide it again. Right click, change clipboard name. Just put a little underscore there. Then it's just an underscore. That's That's pretty close to being blank. You could do that. All right. Um, Irinya, do you use intensity of the symptom one, two, three, four? I'm not sure by how much it repels you. Oh, okay, cool. Good question. Uh, okay, that's what you do. Fine. We're on the same page, you and I. Don't say. Um, Okay, right, let's, let's deal with this. So the intensity of symptom, yeah. The intensity of symptom is very useful if you're using the prominence um, analysis strategy, okay? So let me open an analysis of something I made earlier. I don't know. Um, try that. Okay, that'll do. All right, so, oh look, I've already done some here. So this number here shows you the intensity. So let's say um, support is a four. Um, and then I change the analysis to prominence. Then it changes quite a lot because series one, which means row one on the periodic table, um, you know, is, high in that you know it's in that rubric for support so that comes up and lack of incarnation as well so if you've marked it high and it has a high degree like pulsatilla then that analysis strategy will will push it right up um let's find a, a different a more um grounded analysis uh One with more physicals, cough. Is that a good one? Mm, maybe not. Oh, it's still loading. Uh oh, brush. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, Vivian's off. Bye bye. Um, this again. Um, right, I'll come back to Irinia and then we'll get through these and then we'll be done pretty much. Crashing is an issue. Yeah, crashing is an issue if you abuse the program like I do. It's it's pretty stable. Um, you know, it doesn't crash when I'm working with with patients, I guess. You know, when you're showing stuff, you're kind of zipping around and like going off the cuff and that tends to, you know, do it more. I was recording a really old analysis from a different installation, which I don't know, it probably had something weird, some weird bit of data in it that it didn't like. Um, let's, let's be sensible and open a patient so I know where I'm at. Um, Oh, that doesn't help, though, does it? Uh... Right, there we go. Let's open that one. Okay, that looks like quite a good example. So I've changed the intensity. So if you want to change the intensity, you click on a rubric and then you type a number. So one, 
change that to one, three, change that to three. I tend to just stick with one to four. Um, and Werner's right when he says you have to have consider intensity selected. What we've got in here, and then there's more mind symptoms there. Okay. So if I change this now to prominence, doesn't change it that much, to be fair. Let's see if I change it to the master score. Subtle. You know, the, the thing that used it the most, to be fair, was the Vitalkus expert system, which we're not allowed to um, include anymore because it goes against his, his wishes. Uh, so, yeah, that, that that's definitely what uses the... Um, intensity the most i'd say and that that was what i was using at the time that i made this analysis um, but yeah unfortunately we can't do that anymore um, yeah yeah i mean the compass software is is great and it's online and um the the only thing that i feel goes against it is that it's quite stingy with the credits like you can't you know if you wanted to play around to learn it you'd be using up credits rather than working on a case which i felt was a bit for me as a brit and you know we're all a bit penny pinching and avaricious over here i thought that was a bit of an issue um all right quick drink cynthia why does dragging my search rubric to a clip probe bring a different sub of mood? Okay. It might be a kind of so what so you're opening the navigation window mind and you're saying abusive and you're dragging it in like that and it's actually getting the one below. Is that what you mean? Cynthia? Um after you search. All right. So you make a search for abusive. And you drag it from here, and then it pulls in the one below. Right. That's pretty weird. Um, I don't know. Without seeing your screen and everything, I don't think I can solve that one right now. Um, it might be a resolution thing, or um, certainly shouldn't happen like that. But if you want to avoid it for now, the workaround would be to just press the equals key with the hand pointing to it, and then that will add it to your clipboard. So you don't have to drag and drop. So yeah, that's that's another key command. Whether you're in the search or the repertory, wherever the hand is pointing, press the equals key and the, the rubric goes in. So your, whichever clipboard is set as the default, which is the one with the ticks, and you change the default by holding Alt and clicking on the clipboard. Um, right. Okie dokie. How come so had its uh, family cost 180? Maybe because it's adding the DAT. I might be, well, I'm in the UK, so I don't know um, if it's slightly different based on the exchange rate uh, because the pound is still slightly stronger than the euro. So it does depend where you are. Um, as well so hopefully you're not in the uk <laughs> otherwise it should be the same um oh cool okay with compass if you're a student i'm not a student but if you're a student you can stock up on credits that's cool uh with vest if you bought vest you can still use it but um you can't um we can't sell it anymore you have to use compass it's a bit like what rajan did with his books you know they want you to buy their software which, you know, it's fair enough they've invested in money. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, Cynthia, you know, try a, try a support ticket and see if they can figure it out. Um, yeah, so Daniel, if you want to find out more about series one of the periodic table, let's say, so you can, you know, you can search for it like a remedy. So if you open the remedies up here, and type series you'll see it come up then right click on it and search for example in um all repertories and there you go there's a bit about it there 
Um, but really, yeah, if you want the final word, you want to look at Jan Scholten's work. And we've got his periodic table map here, which is a good one. So click on hydrogen series and it gives you some ideas from that. But probably, you know, he has a website now called Cure, um, Q-J-U-R-E. And it's like a £10 a year to subscribe. And it has like everything from his books on it. It's, it's an amazing valuable resource but not much money um cool thanks cynthia i'm glad you enjoyed it um yeah yeah had, had it, uh, it, it just depends where you are and on the like currency and exchange rate and yeah okay seeing if i missed anything Could you please share your display settings, font font size? Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, I like to, you know, play with the settings a bit. Um, can I share them? It'd be nice if we if there was an export your configuration and you could share it. You can't do that at the moment. So uh, on a Windows machine, I find good font is Segoe, this one, and um, use the largest size available which is 13 on windows on a mac i like avenir uh, that's a really nice font and what else did you say um when you open um a book materia medica i have done a thing where i change the color so click on the configuration and change the background color and it's just like a tiny bit of gray and a tiny bit of yellow to get that color or actually um yeah. And you can that that differentiates it from the repertory quite nicely, which is which is white. Um the name of the say Johnson website equals cure.com. Font font size. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I often do is for the repertories in Materia Medica is I get rid of the flags because I don't particularly like seeing the Union Jack loads of times. So the first thing to do, if, you, if you're if you a single language speaker, um, click the config, go to languages, deselect all, and just put English in. All right, so now you definitely don't need to see the flags. So go back to display and untick the flags. And then you don't see the flags and then do the same in your Materia Medica and the same in the search here. Don't need to see flags. Yeah. So just remove some of the icon overwhelm situation. Okay. There we go. So you got some other people coming and, um, Okay. Yeah, so I hope you enjoy the rest of the day and check out the recordings. I hope you had a good homeo summit. It looked looked awesome. And um I'm doing another QA next week on Thursday. We'll send an email about it. Um on is it Monday? Yeah, it's bank holiday Monday in the UK tomorrow, so maybe Tuesday. Um languages, yeah, there's um Oh, there's loads. I mean, um, if you have a full access, you can um, you can just you should be able to see it all basically. But I don't know off the top of my head how many. Um, oh, in the analysis screen, I think what I've done maybe differently is the um, turn shadow on like that, and definitely change the colors. Um, the uh, default colors are not very nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. Thanks, everyone. Glad you enjoyed it. Hope it made sense. Hope you're going to have fun and a more easy life now. Cool. Ciao for now. Adios. 
案外。はい。